Hey guys, uh, this is my English version. I'll have a Spanish version out for Spanish speakers. But anyway, uh, I want to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. Um, you've heard about my videos uh, on magnetism and how I got the idea for lens-free coil. See, uh, the problem in the past, ever since 1800s, is not the generation of electricity. The generators generate fine, but uh, when you go to plug them into something, all of a sudden you, you have to double, triple the effort to make that generator turn. You can try that out yourselves with a DC motor that has permanent magnets. It'll turn freely, right? Your alternator will turn freely, but plug it into something. And all of a sudden, you oh, this drag, you can't turn it anymore. But it's not because of the production of electricity, guys. It's the magnetism inside the generator that's causing the braking effect. <clears throat> so let me kind of explain it to you. Uh, by the way, you can Google this. Uh, it said Ottawa, Ottawa Skeptics. And Google under images, Ottawa Skeptics. And, and you're going to come to an image that looks like this. Okay. Uh, just a little bit of explanation. This is a coil, like what you find in your generator. This is a light bulb. The circuit is complete with a light bulb. And uh, as a magnet approaches the coil, uh, current starts flowing. What does, what does current flow uh, happen when you have a wire around a, a nucleus? You get an electromagnet. That's what you get. And they taught this to you in your uh, uh, primary school. In kindergarten, after kindergarten, they taught you how to make electromagnets in science. So you should know this, that whenever there's uh, electricity flow, you've got a magnet, an electromagnet. So when the magnet approaches, the same polarity happens here. So you, you get a breaking effect. You get a, see this blue arrow here? You can barely see it. You get a pushback. So you're pushing the magnet away. That's what happens when the circuit is closed. Okay? Now, on your way out, your magnet is leaving here. Your magnet is leaving. Now the arrow is pulling back. Now, now it's breaking your magnet from leaving. So you got like a double break. You got a break coming in because it opposes your, your magnet, and you have a break when the magnet leaves because you got it sucking it in. So, because this changes polarity, okay? So, all of a sudden, uh, opposites attract and it sucks it in. So, two breaks for the price of one. That's what you're getting in a normal generator. That's what you don't want, okay? You don't want that. So, how do we go around that? Well, okay, well, let's break the circuit, right? As long as there's no current flowing, there's no magnetism, there's no electromagnet. But we can't do that. So we got to think of a way to uh, make electricity, but without doing this magnetic effect. And this is where I got the idea. I'm going to follow up where we got where uh, I did last time. <laughs> this belongs to a permanent magnet motor, and you got the, your two magnets inside and uh, I already went through this but anyway I'll, I'll review real quickly when when you put a magnet onto a piece of metal see right now there's no magnet and there's no attraction to another piece of metal okay an iron but what happens when you put a magnet onto the iron well what happens the iron becomes a magnet also, okay? That's what's supposed to happen. It, it, the magnetism goes through, and now it becomes a magnet also. Okay, well, what I found out was that's not what's going on here. You got a strong magnet inside. You got two magnets inside, all right? And there's a strong attraction inside. But guess what? Nothing was happening on the outside. Right? Nothing's going on on the outside. So that got me thinking, 
that's exactly what we need in the in the coils. We need it to cancel out somehow. I don't know how, right? That's what I said, but I found out how, and I'll show you. And uh, when you finish viewing this, share that with everybody because that's what's been holding us back for producing energy easily, the braking effect. If you take away the brakes from your alternator in your car, man, you can power anything. Okay, so even the electric bikes, you can you can power them easily. You don't need the braking effect working against you. Okay, so anyway, share this video, please, with everybody that you know, because no one's ever thought of this before. What happens here when you got your two magnets here, they're opposing each other on the outside too, but the metal, the metal acts like a like a um, short circuit, not a not an electrical short circuit, a magnetic short circuit. So what happens is, remember this is metal. It's supposed to pick up another piece of metal, and it doesn't, not at all. And these magnets are strong inside, but nothing happens on the outside. Why is that? Because you got your opposing sides coming together along with with the, the magnetic material on the outside so they cancel each other out see if you could see a magnet you got a whirlpool going one direction let's say this is the north it's going uh, clockwise and on the other side the south side is going counterclockwise okay it's going the other way around but when they meet together they cancel each other out so that's what's going on that's why it doesn't pick up any metal even though the magnets are right there, it's, it doesn't pick it up. So, see how it forms a circle right here? This is your typical coil, Bedini style coil, where you got uh, your magnets. Just, just for instance, this is not a magnet, but for instance, this is a magnet, and every time you get the magnet, coming across it like that, you're going to produce electrical energy every time. It always works that way. But at the same time, when when these, uh, when you got your load on here, let's say you, you cross these hairs, the wires, every time this goes by, it produces an electromagnet inside here because there's current flowing. Remember what we said about current flowing? It produces an electromagnet. So you got an electromagnet fighting against a magnet. That's the break right there. And as it goes out, it produces the opposite effect. It produces a pull. So that's what I was saying. You've got two brakes coming on every time. Every time there's current flow, okay? We break the current, and there's nothing Nothing happens. It, it's, it's freewheeling again, like your alternator, just free wheels. But when you load it, in other words, when you, when you ask for a current, and current is going through, that's when the fighting occurs. So... Remember that, remember this scheme right here where it comes together? Well, this is where I got the idea. You take, you see this? How it turns, it's not a perfect circle, but it's a circle. What you're going to do here is this. On this other uh, ferrite, you're going to put one side with rubber washers, like the kind you use in plumbing. And just regular washers, metal washers that conduct magnetism. Why is that? All right, let me show you why. You put them together like this. Now, let's say this is your magnet. It comes, you don't want it going through both sides. You want it to go through the top part only. So you have the magnet fly around this, this leg, the top leg. Now, because there's rubber down here, there's a rubber washer, magnetism doesn't flow this way. And that's right, you don't want it to split up into two because then the, the forces will come together and they'll cancel each other out. So you want, you want that magnetism to do work first. So you make the magnet go on this side, and there's a, a rubber washer again, so the magnetism doesn't go down this leg. What it does, the magnetism has to flow this way, producing your electricity like you wanted it to, but at the same time, the magnetic wave goes all the way around. See, because th there's metal here. So it goes all the way around, producing a south. And the south comes r right millimeters away from the north pole that you've created with your lens effect. 
what happens when a north and a south are this close? They cancel each other out. So what happens is the magnetism basically cancels itself out with this right here. It go, it comes in through here because that's that's where your uh, magnet, spinning magnet, is going right around this area. It produces your electricity. Yes, it produces lens effect. But remember, that lens effect is a magnetic effect. So it goes all the way around. So this part is the south. This part is still the north. And because it's only a millimeter or so, the, the rubber washer, the this is a strong mag magnetic current. Now it just jumps right across. It cancels each other out. So now the magnetism is flowing inside here. It has no interest in going out. No, no more. So when when the when the magnet comes spinning around, it doesn't affect the spinning magnets because the magnetism stays inside inside this loop. What we've created here, guys, is a magnetic diode. Magnetism goes in but doesn't come back out. Doesn't come back out to fight the spinning magnets. That's how you produce a lens-free coil. Little rubber washer two metal washers over here to make a little space right here and you make the electric you make the magnetism create your electricity like like it's supposed to but at the very end you cancel it out so that this cancels out and it doesn't affect your spinning magnets understood you need to let everybody know about this because this is going to create a revolution in generation of electricity. Why? Because it spins freely. Your your uh, flywheel with the magnets is going to spin freely. There's no drag effect. So you can put as many of these coils as you want. In other words, I have a motor that takes 33 watts to turn my magnets. Each one of these coils produces 6 watts. So how many coils do I need to produce the 33 watts. Six of them? Six times six? 36. Oh my god, I'm, I'm six over. Does that mean over unity? I don't know. Try it out. But I want you to verify this. 200 turns here and you can also duplicate that voltage by doing 200 turns there on the other one too. But it has to be wound in the same direction so that if you find that you wound it the different direction and you put them together it produces zero volts it's because your uh, your wires are not hooked up right. They should be complementary. So in other words, when you start uh, winding this one, you have to continue all the way around to this one, the same direction. Okay. So if you start this way, you need to continue all the way. So 200 turns here, you could do 200 turns there. That's going to increase your voltage. Okay. But it's still going to create that magnetic diode where the magnetism will go in, gets trapped in the circle, doesn't come out to to hinder the rotating magnets. That's how it works. Good luck. You can try it out, you can short it, and you'll see that it doesn't draw more amps. The, the spinning motor will not draw more amps. You can even short it out. Nothing's going to happen. Okay? Try it.